Hey, good evening, Harvest Time Bible Church Online. It is so good to be able to once again meet with you this evening and uh, pray that you've had a great day and a good week and that you're staying warm and uh, anticipating warmer weather is coming. Yes, it sounds like Sunday is going to be uh, in the low 30s. Uh, how exciting is that? And uh, again, we're just so glad um, that you're willing to uh, watch and tune in tonight. Thank you. Welcome to Follow. And uh, again, it's all about uh, follow me as we follow Christ. Romans 1.12, I want to help you grow in your faith as you help me grow in my faith by your faith. And uh, what an amazing thing that we get to help each other grow in our faith. I love verses like Romans 1.12, Proverbs 27.17, as iron sharpens iron, so the countenance of one man sharpens another. So many verses throughout scripture talk about the importance that we have of building into each other's faith and uh, that we get to play a part in that is just an amazing thing that God allows us to play a part in building each other's faith. That's just so incredible and amazing and uh, what a blessing, what a what an amazing thing that to know that, you know what, because I am a child of God, because I've been wonderfully and, cre and creatively made, fearfully made, just as we read in Psalm 139 this past Sunday, um, I have something to offer because Christ lives in me. No matter what you think about yourself, you have the ability, because Christ lives in you, to make a difference in someone else's life. And, and, and I want to be doing that. Uh, that's why I, that's why I'm doing this tonight. That's why I, why I do what I do is because, you know what? It's not me. If it was me, I couldn't do anything. Um, I would mess it up every time. I thank God that, that he um, chooses to let me be involved in, in his mission. And so, uh, again, so many ways to do that. So many things that you can be involved in. We obviously want to encourage you to continue to be involved um, in, uh, in being a part of what God is doing in people's lives. And, uh, and so we encourage you to, uh, to think about that. Hey, starting February the 28th, it's a Sunday, um, I'm going to be uh, leading a life group uh, entitled Starting Point. And uh, it is a great opportunity for those of you that want to know more about Harvest Time. You want to know what we believe and what we do and how we how you can get involved and what's the next step that you can take in, in your faith journey here at Harvest Time. Uh, again, it's so I, I think it has just been an awesome class um, and uh, it's just going to be a few weeks long. Um, we are going to meet in person and online. So uh, if you would get signed up for that, you can get signed up for, by going to the website, htvc.church. There is a uh, right on the pop-up, right as soon as you get to the website, there's a pop-up that's there and there is a logo that you can click on and get signed up uh, and do that if you would. Um, again, it, it I want to be able to send you the Zoom link so you can, you can if you're going to stay online and you want to watch online and be a part of the conversation online, you can do that. The other thing too is we're going to be recording them and then and then they'll be uploaded onto the website and onto Facebook. So you, you can watch them um, via uh, those two avenues um, at, any, at any time. So again, three ways to get involved encourage you to be a part of it um, and I'd love for you to be a part of it. Hey, follow. We've been doing follow um, the last few weeks uh, here online. Um, We're going to be starting a in-person follow uh, March the 3rd. It's in-person follow. Um, it is follow. It's a life group. It's different. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not going to be like just a normal I teach you listen sort of thing. Um, it's very interactive uh, actually, what we do is one week we're meeting all together. The next week you're meeting in a small group, practicing Romans one twelve, building into each other's faith. It's not just about me building into yours and yours into me. It's about all of us doing that together. So one week we'll meet together as a large group, and then the next week we'll meet together in small groups, and you can meet here at the, at the church, that sort of thing. I'll give you a schedule. Um, that very first week will kind of be a... Uh, an introduction um, to what we're doing. Listen, if you're already in a life group, I don't know that you need to come. If you're already involved in a life group, if you already are actively doing a another study, 
I'm not sure you need to add another study to your load. Um, sometimes, sometimes we get so, so involved in so many things that we end up doing them with mediocrity. What, what do I mean by that? I, I mean, simply, we end up only being able to get, there's only so much of you. I mean, think about it. If, if you, if you were to represent your life as a pie, and you're giving this piece of pie to this thing and this piece of pie to that thing and this piece of pie. There's no, and then there's only that one little bit of slice that left that you, I'm not sure that you can do all of these things and do them really well. God's more concerned about quality than he is quantity. Quality instead of quantity. And so I'm not saying don't come. I'm just saying, please pray. Please understand. There's going to be some commitments to it. And I want to encourage you. Um, I want to encourage you to come, of course. If you if you feel like God is leading you to come, then come. But if you're already involved in a life group, I want you to consider um, that, you know what? Just be praying about it, okay? That, that, that'll be the challenge for you. And, and, uh, and leave it at that, all right? So that is starting March the 3rd, and it'll be from 6 to 7.30 uh, in the Fellowship Hall. 6 to 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Um, and so we encourage you guys to come out and be a part of that if you can. Uh, again, I will be continuing to do something online um, on Wednesdays. Uh, we'll have follow online and also follow in person, okay? Hey, Easter, just around the corner, April the 4th. Um, it is a Sunday, uh, obviously Easter Sunday, April the 4th, and uh, we will be having uh, in-person and online services at 8, 9.30, and 11. 8, 9.30, and 11. There will be no life groups that day. Um, there will be kids, church, and nursery provided during the 9.30 and the 11 o'clock hours, all right? So uh, 8, 9.30, and 11 on Easter Sunday. There will be no signups. Um, we are uh, we are actually going to be doing some adjusting in the uh, sanctuary to provide more seating um, and uh, be just following guidelines that we've been given. Um, and uh, also uh, in talking to Whiteside County Health, there's some things that we can do that we're uh, going to be providing more seating. And uh, because of that, we won't be needing to do the online signups. Um, but we do want to encourage you to be thinking about, praying about. Um, and again, it's, not, it's going to be provided in person and online. And uh, we want to encourage you to be a part of Easter Sunday services, April the 4th. So if you would, mark those down on your calendar, okay? Hey, some folks to be praying for. One of the greatest things that we can do in being on mission for God, building each other's faith, is to pray for one another. Why? Because we're praying to the one who can actually do something. So the greatest thing I can do for you is to pray for you because I'm praying on behalf of you to the greatest one who can actually do something about it. So praise. We prayed for Cedar Yaklich on Sunday. Asked you guys to be praying for Cedar. Found out. She does not have cancer. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? She does not have cancer. And also ask that you be praying for her because she does have infection in her leg and in the bone in her leg. So ask you guys to be praying for her. Continue to lift her up before the Lord. Be praying for uh, Texas. And uh, many, many of us have friends in Texas that um, just having a real struggle, uh, obviously with the cold, cold temperatures down there and uh, lack of heat and other things. So if you guys would be praying for people. Uh, and then another note of praise, um, our uh, encouragement team sent out, check this out, this is so cool, 511 Valentine's Day cards to people. They sent them to nursing homes, sent them to people in our church, sent them to people in our community. Um, what an awesome opportunity to connect people with uh, the body of Christ, but more importantly, with a relationship with Jesus, would you be praying for that as those cards have gone out? Be praying that uh, people would be open to the gospel as they receive it in a card. All right. So if you guys would lift those up before the Lord. Hey, take a moment and ask God to speak to your heart before we dive into his word today.
Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity we have tonight to just be able to connect together um, as we watch. And thank you that we can connect with you as we pray and as we study your word. And, and as we um, are just as a part of a bigger whole. Thank you for that. Thank you that, that each one of us plays a part in the body of Christ, in the church. God, and your call is for us to be the church every day, everywhere. So God, we give you praise for the things that you have done, the things that you are doing. God, we're excited to, to be able to play a part in that. Thank you for that. Even tonight, as we're challenged to follow you, help us to reach out and to help others grow in their faith as we grow in our own. God, you are good. God, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. Hey, so how's your mindset these days? We've been talking about mindset for the last two weeks. We're going to continue to talk about mindset over the next several Sundays. Um, how's your mindset? How's it going? How's your thinking? What are you feeling? Are those things consistent with the word of God? Are they consistent with God's character? If they're not, if the world says it's okay, we really ought to ask ourselves, really not ourselves, we ought to ask God, God, is it? Is what I'm thinking, is what I'm feeling okay with you? That's what matters. No matter what the world says, no matter even what other Christians might say, what does God say about your thinking and about your feelings? Why? Because your thoughts and your feelings matter to God. And it's vital that we, as we talked about Sunday, that we make sure we check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Because if not, we read Psalm 139. Psalm 139 is written by David. David was a man after God's own heart. That's what God called him. But yet David had moments in his life, just like all of us do, where we don't check ourselves, And we end up, at our thoughts, our feelings, they betray us. They can be wrong. They can be messed up. They can be misdirected. And those things can come back to bite us big time. And that happened to David multiple times. Um, if you ever want to read a really awesome biography of David, um, written by Chuck Swindoll, uh, he writes it about David. It is, it is an amazing, amazing book. Um, great supplement to the Word of God. Again, not to supplant the Word of God. That's not the idea of it. It's to supplement, all right? And again, um, he writes a, a whole series, um, uh, really they're biographies of, of different characters of the Bible. And uh, the one that he writes on David was just, man, so good. And uh, in there, he talks about the different ways that David compromised and didn't check himself. And it ended up wrecking um, much in his life. And it didn't have to be that way. It did not have to be that way. And that's the same thing in ours. If, if we're unwilling to check our thinking, if we're unwilling to check our feelings and just act on whatever we feel and act on whatever we think, be careful. Be careful. I mean, that's why the Bible says pride comes before a fall. That, that, that's why it's so important that, that even like in Proverbs where it talks about in Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else. Guard your heart for out of it flows everything of life. So we need to constantly be checking. God, is what I'm thinking, is what I'm feeling okay with you? We talked about it a little bit in our, our staff meeting that that uh, how important it is for us. We, we might see a post on Facebook or we might hear something and we might be talking with somebody how vital it is that we take the time to stop and think through what we're hearing, what we're feeling, what we're thinking before we react. Because once you react, you cannot take it back. Once it's out of your mouth, once it's come out of your face, <laughs> you cannot put those words back in. Once it's been typed, it's out there. It's out there. So be careful. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. And we, and we said, hey, here's four questions that you need, four questions that you need to ask. Remember, what do I believe about God? That's number one. What do I believe about God? When it comes to your thinking, when it comes to your feelings, what do you believe about God? Secondly, 
what do I believe about myself? What do I believe about myself? Read Psalm 139. What do I believe about God? What do I believe about myself? Thirdly, am I willing to trust God more than my thinking and feelings? Am I willing to trust God more than my thinking and my feelings? I'm going to come back to that in just a little bit. I want to spend some time on that. I think that's important that we, we dive into that a little bit more. And then the fourth question is, am I willing to follow God? Remember, David said, lead me in the way everlasting. That implies that you're willing to follow. It would be silly to even ask God to lead me if I'm not willing to follow him. If I'm not willing to go the direction that he wants me to go, it, what would be the point of asking him to lead? David asks God to lead him in the way everlasting. That, that is so so critical that we get it. The way everlasting. That means your best in mind. Not, 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 the, not your better, not your good, your best in mind. The way everlasting. And the thing that, 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 here's the thing, again, stuff that you do now echoes into eternity. It really does. It really, really does. The things you do now matter in light of eternity and it matters to God and again if if my thinking and my feelings matter to God then they should matter to me as well so I want to come back to that third question am I willing to trust God above more than my thinking and my feelings and I want to do it in light of a, a a really familiar passage. I know I've talked to the, I've talked about this before. I reference these verses all the time. These are my mother-in-law's favorite verses. Um, I I love these verses. They gave me a Bible um, that I still use all the time. And uh, in it, in the in the beginning, in the very front of it, when they signed it, they put she put down there. My father-in-law put down there. Proverbs three, five, and six. So so critical, so vital. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he, he, that's God, will direct your path, will direct your life. That's what, that, that's what that's talking about. It will He will direct your life. Lead me in the way everlasting. I want to follow him. He will direct your life your life but trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding there it is am i willing to trust god more than my thoughts and my feelings lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him again am i willing to follow am i willing to trust him above more than my my thinking and my feelings that is so critical. And you know what it comes back to? It comes back to those first two questions. It comes back to the answers to those first two questions. What do I believe about God? What do I believe about myself? Really, as you answer those questions, the whole trusting in God thing becomes, becomes more and more clear. Am I willing to trust God more than my thinking and my feelings? If I really understand myself, if I really understand who God is, then I understand that, you know what? My thinking, my feelings can be flesh driven. They can be driven by pride. They can be driven by self. That's what I mean by flesh driven. They're, they're, they can be driven by what I want. And oftentimes what we want is not what we need. Oftentimes what we want is driven by our flesh, not by our spirit. That's, that's why Paul would say things like, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. That's why in the in very same passages, he was saying things like, I know the good I ought to do, but I don't do it. I end up doing the very thing that I hate. And there's a war going on between my flesh and my spirit. There's a war going on between, between God and Satan. 
and it's a battle that we can't see and there's a there's a spiritual war that's going on that we can you and i are a part of it and there's a warfare that's going on that that we can't see that but we're very much a part of and we can see the results of it we can see the impact of it on our lives but ultimately ultimately it comes down to what do i really believe about god and what do i believe about myself am i willing to trust god more than my thinking and my feelings now Proverbs 3 5 and 6 trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths there's this key word i know i've talked about this before but it's just so important there's a key word there it's the word all all Yes, you can trust God in all. Yes, you can acknowledge God in all. That word all, so important. There's a story told about a, a little boy who came up to his dad. And he said, Daddy, Daddy, my, my hand, my hand, it hurts. Daddy, my hand hurts. Well, the father, the dad, he looks down at his son's hand and he sees that his hand is, is clenched around something. It, and it's obvious to the dad that, that there's a ball in his, in his son's hand. Daddy, I, my hand hurts. Well, son, you're, you're, you're clutching so hard to that ball that's in your hand. I, I tell you what, buddy. Let go of it. And I... And, and, and I bet I almost I almost guarantee the pain will go will go away. The pain will subside if you just will let go of it. Dad, I, I don't want to lose it. Well, okay, if you let go of it, I'll hold on to it and I'll keep it safe for you. Okay, Dad. Well, the, the boy begins to open up his hand open up his hand slowly slowly opening it up and he hasn't quite gotten it all the fingers released and he's still still kind of holding on to it and the dad's like okay you gotta let it go all you need to open up your hand completely and let it go little boy opens up his hand the ball drops into his father's hand and almost, almost immediately, the little boy says, oh, my hand feels so much better. It feels so much better. All. Oh. Not 99.9%. Not all. All means all, and that's all all means. All. Willing to trust God with all my thinking, with all my feelings. Open up your hand and drop it into the hand of God. God is big enough to keep safe, God is big enough to handle your thinking and your feelings. No matter how dark they may be, no matter how difficult they may be, no matter how absurd they may seem, God is big enough to handle them. Are you willing to trust him over? Are you willing to trust him above? Are you willing to trust him more than you're thinking? I'm not saying that what you're thinking and feeling isn't real. It very much is. But are you willing to let it go? Are you willing to let it go? See, how do I do that? Time. Sometimes it's a quick thing. I can just boop, drop. Sometimes it takes a long time to unravel whatever it is that you're holding on to. But like David in Psalm 139, 
I trust you. Lead me in the way everlasting. Some, sometimes that way may be longer than others. It may take time. So here's the thing, what I found in my life anyway, is that when it takes longer, it takes even a higher level of trust, a higher level of faith, a higher level of relying on God because Satan will come along and say, is it really even worth it? You're still struggling with this. You still, you're still, can I tell you, there's been things in my life that, that have taken what seems like a long, long time. But I can tell you when I finally let go and dropped it into his hand and he took it. Wow. Wow. Now that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that there's not so consequences. That little boy's hand for a long time had the ball impression in his hand. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be consequences. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be difficulty. Think about David and his sin with Bathsheba. One year goes by. He ends up repenting of that sin. Are there still effects after that? Yeah. But if you read Psalm 51, you find out, you know what? To David, letting it go trusting God, leaning not his own understanding and all of his ways acknowledging him, was it worth it to let it go? Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, I, again, I, I don't know what you're wrestling through. I don't know what you're struggling with. I know over the next several weeks, we're going to be dealing with some different things like anxiety, and worry, anger, different feelings, different thinkings. And I wonder, are you willing to trust him more than what you think or what you feel? Is it an easy process to let go? No. And sometimes it, it really takes God, um, well, disciplining us. Because I don't know about you, but I know for me, I'm kind of thick skulled, thick headed. I sometimes have to learn the hard way. And, and I, I can tell you that the way that it that I can trust him, the way that I can let go, is I have to continually, moment by moment, go back to him. I think that's why Jesus said, when if you want to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow me. But 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 interestingly, one of the gospel writers write wrote daily. Daily. And I don't think it was a once a day thing. I only think it's moment by moment every day. Reminding myself, what do I believe about God? What do I believe about myself? Am I willing to trust him? Am I willing to follow? Get into his word. Get on your knees in prayer. Seek after him. He will be found. He wants to lead you in the way everlasting. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for my friends watching tonight. I pray your blessing on their life. I ask God that you would guide, you would direct them, and you would help them to trust you with all their heart, to lean out of their own understanding, to acknowledge you in all our ways, and you will direct their life. God, thanks for your love. Thank you for your son, Jesus, in his name I pray. Amen. Hey, my friend, I pray you have a really great night and an awesome week ahead. Look forward to seeing you soon. You are loved.